Hello, this is Verity from Expert Agent and welcome to your video training and on this video we're looking at Expert Administrator. This video is designed to help existing Expert Agent users in an administration role to ensure that they know how to use the system for tasks that are most important to them. So what we'll look at this video then is preparing for the day, keeping lists tidy, look at when negotiators are out of the office, property admin, working with keys and finishing up with viewing management. So first thing we're going to have to think about then is preparing for the day. So a bit of a recap on home page, staff profile, dashboards and right hand toolbar and grids. Your home page is usually the first page that you see when you log into Expert Agent. If you aren't seeing it, you can click on the logo in the top left hand corner, which will open up your home page. The idea of the home page is that it should give you all information that you need to plan your day. So if you are somebody that has lots of appointments, you need it to show those. If you're somebody who spends more time in the office on the phone, then you need quick links, tasks and so on. By default, the home page is set up how you see it here with these default five pods. You can remove any of these pods that you want to, or you can add additional pods and reorder the pods on the home page and expand them and collapse them. Just have a quick recap on how you would change the pods on the home page. Hover over tools in the top menu and select my profile. At the bottom there, you have a button called configure home page and you click on that one. You untick the pods that you don't need to see. So for example, if you are an administrator, you probably won't need to see the potential vendor alerts or any of the viewings. Potentially some of the offers as well, you won't need to see. So what you might need to have a think about though is applicant quick links, maybe some property quick links as well. And depending on whether you're in lettings or not, some landlord quick links, offer quick links, and maybe some tenancy ones and maintenance jobs as well. You then can set it to two or three columns, reset the home page, we'll set it to the default five, and you just press save. Press save on this page as well, and your new pods will be sitting one on top of the other in the top left hand corner. To move them, you need to click and drag them over to where you want to dock them. So you can collapse these pods and have them minimized and then when you come in in the day first thing in the morning you can see your appointments and then your tasks and then maybe have a look at some applicant quick links like for example you might have applicants not contacted in the last fortnight that you will need to get in contact with. Your staff profile contains all of your specific staff details as well as there being there some key settings on that actual page. It's important that your staff details are kept up to date so that when you send out emails from the system, it is correct and your customers are seeing what you need them to see. So hover over tools in the top menu and select my profile. This is how you want your name displaying on your emails when you send them out and on letters. And the short name for grids determines how your name is displayed within various grids with an expert agent. You can't change your username from here, but you can change your password if you need to. Other important information such as your job title, your reply email address, and the branch that you're assigned to within Expert Agent as well are featured here. This determines um, how your negotiator signature will read on outputs. A couple of other things that are important are the subscribe to newsletter. It will show you expert agent new newsletters that contains useful information and important information on new enhancements, property industry news and general expert agent news. So really important to have that one ticked as well as the right hand toolbar. You can edit how many columns you want displaying in your daily diary from here and the default appointment length and set your diary start and end hour from here as well. This image section allows you to upload staff images onto your profile. Some agents like to upload their signature or a staff pro photo or both, and then they can be used on your outputs. There are merge codes for these, so you can set up all of your emails and documents to feature not only your signature, but also your image as well. Thinking about editing your team then, you've got the button at the bottom there that says configure my team. This is something obviously we do cover in introductory training and it relates to the diary. It is the option to have a group of people set up um, in your diary who you would frequently need to look at alongside. It is likely that this will need amending from time to time as staff changes occur. So 
we need to do is click on the configure my team remove anybody by highlighting them in the selected negotiator column and using the single arrow across and selecting the new person from the unselected negotiator column and clicking the single arrow the other way if you need to move anybody within that as well so they're sitting next to you in the diary highlight them and use the up arrows close that one there and press save Dashboards are a great way of finding singular records and getting a snapshot of related activity and information and it is essential that you get all of the dashboards within Expert Agent set up to work with you. In order to access any dashboard you need to hover over the relevant section in the top menu and select the dashboard option. There are four key sections to any dashboard, the quick find, the navigation history, the applicant statistics and the quick links. Now those quick links will show on the quick links pod on your home page as well. You now have the ability to create your own quick links which we'll have a look at doing in later sections. To edit the quick links you need to select the cog item and then you'll have the option of using your saved selection so those are other quick links that other people within your office have created or you can use the ones that we've created for you. You have your personal quick links, quick links to a specific office, so the personal ones are mine, the specific office is office, or the quick links that cover a wider group if you're part of a multi-branch firm are the ones that begin with group. At this point, being an administrator, you'll probably be thinking about having quick links along the lines of applicants with no email address, with no mobile number as well. So you'd select which ones you wish to show and press the save option. Once you've set up your applicant dashboard, you will need to go onto your other dashboards and do the same. So hover over properties, for example, and select dashboard from there. Click on the cog icon on property quick links and select your quick links from there. A suggestion of quick links you might want to think about for your properties are properties with HIP or EPC outstanding, properties with electricity, electrical safety or gas check due for lettings for example and marketed properties with no brochures if for example you are in charge of doing the brochures in your office. Once you've set up your dashboard and the quick links associated with them, it is a good idea to start thinking about the right hand toolbar. This is a really useful tool that can be accessed from anywhere within Expert Agent. The right hand toolbar, if you've ticked it in your staff profile, will be showing up here. It's a blue box with a white arrow in it. And when you hover over it, it goes pink and you get a hand icon and you can click to open it up. The right hand toolbar contains a selection of quick links for all aspects of the system. However, we do suggest that these are different quick links used to the ones on your dashboards. The right hand toolbar can be accessed from anywhere and therefore the links on them should be ones that you need to keep an eye on throughout the day without having to go back to your dashboards. So if you click edit at this point, it'll open up a long list of all available quick links, including the saved selections for each part of the system as well. And you select which ones you wish to use. A few quick links you might want to think about are applicants not contacted in the last fortnight and things like the new website registrations as well. Moving down to viewings, probably the ones like the pending viewings, maybe even viewings to chase and viewings to feedback. So select which ones you wish to use and press the save option and those will go into your right hand toolbar. Now these don't show anywhere other than the right hand toolbar so they don't show on the dashboards and they don't show on the quick links pod on your homepage either. Moving on to grids then, so hovering over applicants and selecting grid. Grids are a great way of searching, finding, sorting and reporting on multiple records. They're an easy way of displaying and manipulating multiple records. There are three key features to any grid. You've got the dynamic information panel at the top, which you can open using that white arrow. The main body of the grid below showing you 10 records to a page and the action menu available on the right click of the mouse. Also from the white list icon over on the right hand side and that will show you all available workflows associated with whatever section you are in. There are many ways of searching, sorting and finding on a grid. They are all covered in the introductory training. The first thing though you should probably be aware of is the fact that you can change positions on the column depending on what you need to see in the grid. 
So if you right click on the grid, you've got the option on the action menu to choose columns. Anything that's unticked isn't deleted, it's just hidden. And you can move the columns up by clicking on the column that you wish and using the up arrow to move them up. So moving them up where you need them so it is displaying correctly how you need it. Once you're happy with that, you press save and that changes your grid there. So a few suggestions on how you might want uh, your grid to show would be things like the last or the next contact dates and the email and mobile number column so you can keep an eye on the contact applicant's contact details. There is a quick link for applicants with no email address as well and with no mobile number so you can use those quick links as well. Once you've set up your applicant grid, you will need to set up all other grids as well. So hovering over property and select grid. So on the property grid, if you right click and select choose columns, an idea of what you might want to think about here are things like the key and the key numbers. And again, the next contact due of when the next contact for the applicant for the vendor is due. So press save and that will move your columns around. Once you've set up all your grids, you can start then thinking about creating your own saved selections, so your personalised quick links. So for example, you might want to keep an eye on the vendor's next contact due date. Uh, within a week, for example, there is a next contact due date quick link um, for due today, but you might think that a week is perhaps a bit more helpful for you. So if we just change the columns there to just hide key numbers for a minute, so we move next contact actually into the grid there. So make sure you have the next contact due column showing and then right click on the calendar icon at the top of the next contact due on the auto refresh dates. If you want the dates to be static, you need to use the calendar option. If you need them to auto refresh, you select the auto refresh dates. So in the top one, you select today and then save. In the bottom one, you select a week's time and then save. So that will create that quick link there for you from today to a week's time and that will roll. So tomorrow it will be from tomorrow to a week's time. Once you've done that, you need to right click, save selection criteria and you have the option of saving it here. So give it a selection name. So uh, vendors with next contact due within a week. You can add selection notes in there and you can also save your, uh, share your selection with other members of your team. Press save and then OK and you've created your quick link. What we're going to have a think about next then is keeping lists tidy, so your outstanding matches, website registrations and then checking your own tasks. So the outstanding matches can be found under the applicants drop down and you've got two options of all outstanding matches or my outstanding matches depending on how you work. The outstanding match grid is a standard grid with a dynamic information panel at the top and I'm going to select my outstanding matches. So it's got that dynamic information panel at the top, the main body of the grid below with 10 records to a page and the action menu showing you all of the relevant workflows associated with the match grid. The first thing to check in the match grid is the statuses of these matches. Some of them might be set to OK to post and which we'll have a look at later. Any of them that are marked pending you will have to check who ran the match using the matched by column. Remember to use the right click and choose columns if it's in the wrong place. Once you've found out who ran the match, you can decide to either process the matches or reject them. From the action menu, you can select exclude all. If you don't want to process them. And then again, you will need to open up the action menu. So we'll exclude all. And then you need to open up the action menu again to reject excluded. That will leave the outstanding match grid empty and you can then close it. 
If you need to process the matches, you can email them by opening up the action menu and sending email. So my ones that are okay to post are unticked because I'm only sending these emails to the ones that are pending. So right click, output, send email. So you can give it a title. So do remember though that this might be multiple properties going to multiple applicants, so do to keep it generic. Mark matches as complete, exclude upon completion, and press save to send the email. One of them hasn't gone, so you press OK, and this one hasn't gone because this applicant doesn't accept emails, so you're going to have to think about whether you can send this via post along with the others that you need to send via post as well. So some agents do use their outstanding match grid to tell the administrators that they have matches ready to post. If this is the case in your office, obviously you can filter on the match status of OK to post. With these, you will need to open up the action menu, select outputs, and select letters and lists. From the drop downs, then you select your letter and your list. This mark matches as complete will always be unticked, and then we need to exclude successful matches upon completion. Now, the reason why that top one is unticked is so that you can manually mark these as complete once you have them in your hand. Once they've printed, and you're happy with your matches, you can mark them as complete then. So press save. So that will open up this page with your matches, so you can just press print. Once you've posted, you will need to change the status to completed. However, you will need to include them all first. So right click and include all. And then right click, change status, completed and mark as posted. Just to let the system know that you have posted these and also to let other people know when they're looking back on the matches on those applicants that you did actually post those matches. and then press save. So the status has now changed to complete and I told the system to not mark them as complete that I would want mark them as complete but once I had done that manually to exclude those matches upon completion. So if I press OK now it will have got those matches out of my grid. If you had filtered on OK to post and there were other matches in there any other matches will be left in the match grid which you will need to process using the same steps that we've just gone through either emailing or sending by letter. With regards to website registrations either from your applicant dashboard or from your right hand toolbar either one I have got their new website registrations not validated. If I click into that one, it will open up a pre-filtered grid of all applicants that have registered from the website that we haven't yet validated. We do highly suggest that someone in the office keeps an eye on this as applicants will not work properly, as in most cases applicants don't register themselves with full details. So you will need to click onto the quick link and open up your pre-filtered grid. So what you need to do is click into the applicant to open them up. The most important tab before you validate these applicants to look at is the Match Criteria tab. If this tab is filled in wrong, the applicant will not match up to anything. Applicants do not get asked a price on registration, just a price range. So you don't need to put a price in here because the range will already be set. It is important to check areas though and any features. If they've added a lot of essentials, you might potentially need to talk to them about maybe unticking some of those essentials as it is going to reduce what they are matched out to. Once you've checked the match criteria tab, you can go through all of the others and check those that you need to. But after you've checked all of them, the only thing you need to do is right click and you'll have the option to validate. When you click on validate, you get the option to assign it to a negotiator. So we're going to go and find the negotiator and then select the department as well. 
Click Save and that applicant is now validated and will match properly. Within Expert Agent, you can set tasks for yourself and for your colleagues on any number of things. Any appointment in the diary, letters and brochures produced, notes in the events tab. And there are two ways of checking these tasks. You can either use the task pod in the home page with all of the tasks in there. You can also use tools, drop down and select task from there and that will open up the task grid. So by default it will filter on your own tasks and you can select which task you wish to open by clicking on it. So this is an open viewing and you can see in the internal appointment notes that the task has been set to chase for a second viewing in two days. And if you scroll down you can see the appointment negotiator is my colleague Amy and it's been set the task for me for today. It is important to check this notes box because that's where they will probably set what task you want them they want you to do either by getting viewing feedback or chasing the viewing or booking in a second viewing. If a second viewing is needed from the action menu you can open the viewings planner and book in a second viewing from there. If the task is completed though you can mark it as closed and that will take it off your task grid. Let's have a think about then jobs that are needed to be done when negotiators are out of the office. So accessing and using quick messages and using the events tab. The quick message system in Expert Agent is used by us to send information about new releases and new features. It's also sent by us to alert you when a brochure has come back from production. However, a lot of agents don't realise you can use it to message your colleagues as well and you can assign records to those messages as well. So to access your messages, you can either go through Tools and Messages, or if you've got any new messages, they will be up in the top bar as well. There's a little icon there, and if you've got a new message, it will have that blue dot icon in the top speech bubble. Clicking on either one of those will open up your quick message inbox. As I said, not only will you have messages from your colleagues in here like this one but you will also have messages from us saying that your brochures are out of conversion. We'll look at brochures later on. So if you click into the message it will say there please call and the record will, should be linked. So if you click on that one it will open up the message, it will open up the record and you can then using the information panel get their information and give them a call. You can also create messages from here as well, so select new message and then you select who the message is going to. Put in the subject and then click in the drop down for included records and you can add people that you've recently been on or records that you've recently been using. Then in the message box here you can put, for example, regarding your phone conversation yesterday. Press the little paper plain icon at the bottom and that will send off to Amy. So if we close that one down and go on to an applicant record, you can also send messages from an applicant record. Right click on the applicant and you've got the option there for quick message and it will automatically assign the applicant that you send that message from. This is a good thing to remember when taking messages for colleagues or for negotiators when they are out of the office. Each record within Expert Agent has an events tab. This tab is a note of everything that you've done within the system on it and it's saved with a date and a timestamp and a negotiator stamp for compliancy reasons. Taking this event into account, if you click on that one, you can see that it has been booked by me for a colleague. So I might need to set the task for my colleague to let her know that that event has been booked in. I can also at this point change the appointment negotiator to my colleague Amy as well. So once that's been booked in and she'll be tasked on our home page, it will also go in her diary and you can right click and save and close. You 
can also set tasks onto logs on the events tab by events tab by clicking on the new event button you set the event type from the drop down list here and you will have your own event types within your own business configuration and then you set the notes So we're going to set that as a task for my colleague and set it as a task for tomorrow for her. And then save. And that will go on the events tab as a note as well. So the events tab is a really useful one to remember as you can not only see what's happened on the property or applicant but you can also add future events and tasks as well. Next we're going to have a think about property admin, so adding room details, brochures, ordering boards and the expert agent marketplace. When adding room details to the property, you do this from the brochures tab on the property. When you click on the brochures tab, you need to select the room, brochure, room details sub tab and click on the add room button. It will give you the option to add the title in, so you can just start typing into that box and it will give you some options and you select which option from the drop down. You then type in the feet and inches and it will populate the meters box for you. This size text box will pull through onto brochures if you use the size text merge field. So if you have the meters first and then the feet afterwards in brackets, you will need to manipulate that box and make sure that it is reading correctly. You can then add the description of the box and then you've got the option of adding an image to this room as well. Some agents do use that, adding an image and then use the room photo merge code on brochures. Some agents also like to assign the room details. If, for an example, you don't go out and do the viewings, you don't see the properties, it is still quite nice to have an image and the details of the room as you're looking at them as well. You've then at the bottom got the option to add another room, which is ticked by default. If you don't want to, you untick it, but I'm going to keep it ticked and press save. Then add another room in there. So type in the feet and inches and the description. You've also got the option again to assign an image. I'm going to untick add another room and press save. So those two rooms will go in there and you can click and drag the rooms around if you need to and then press save new room order. Once you've added all of your room details, you probably will be ready to start creating the brochures for this property. And you do this from the word brochure sub tab on the brochures tab of the property. You select your brochures from the drop down menu. Now those brochures will pull through from the R letters tab, any templates on the R letters tab set with the template type of property particulars. If you are involved in creating those brochure templates, there is a brochure video available on YouTube. We also run live courses every Wednesday afternoon. So you select which option you wish to use from the drop down and press create brochure. It will then start opening up in the bottom download bar. So you need to click on it to open it up within Word. So it's pulled through all sorts of relevant information, the main photo, the star items, the other three photos, our room details there, and our floor plans and our EPC. The only thing it hasn't pulled through is the price. Now do not change this. Always leave the price in as a text merge code there. Never change it to the price. Always leave it as it is. You can make one-off changes to these brochures. So say for example, we'll move that one there. If you do make one-off changes, or regardless of whether you've made changes, however, you need to go File and Save As and save this onto your local hard drive. So I'm just going to save it onto my desktop. A lot of agents will have a file on their desktop that they use to save these brochures in. Once they're saved and inserted back into the system, you can then delete them from your desktop. And then press Save. Once it's saved, you can close down Word 
and back into Expert Agent you need to press select and go and upload that brochure back into the system. You then decide whether you want to upload it as an office brochure or as a website brochure or both. Now obviously if you're doing both you only need to do this process once. If you're doing individual ones you need to do this process twice. Press save and it will tell you that your brochure has gone into the queue for conversion. This will normally be ready within a minute and you will be notified by a message in the top left hand corner of your screens on the new message system once your brochure is ready. So what it's doing is it's pulling it through from Word, turning it into a PDF and then putting the price on top of the PDF. So you press OK and you'll get notified in the top corner once you've got your message back. So once you get the new message symbol, it can be anything from about 20 seconds to maybe 10-15 minutes, so do be patient about that. But once you've got your message in the top, you click on it and there'll be a message there from yourself. Click on your message and you've got the option to open the PDF brochure from there. And if we scroll down, you can see that the price has been pulled through into the brochure. So never ever change the price in the Word document. If you do, any price changes that you may need to do on these property particulars will not work properly. So close down that one and then click on the property link in the message and it will refresh the property and assign the brochure to the property correctly. It will now be assigned on the presentation tab under the full particulars tab and you've got the option to upload or view the uploaded PDF from here and this is where you will print from. So don't print from the Word document as that doesn't have the price in it and that's then when you will be tempted to add the price in. Always print from the uploaded PDF file. If you have the ability to email your board contractor, you might be using the board ordering facility through Expert Agent. When a property is put on the market via the action menu, so when you right click, change status and put on market, you will be asked whether you want to put a property board up. You can actually do it from the property as well. So onto the details tab of the property, down but scrolling down you've got the option here to order the board. So you select change board. You then select the board status and select when you want that board to be put up and if you want that actioning, so you want your board contractor to action it and let you know that you've received it, that they've received it and then you've got the action by date, so when you need them to action it by. So we don't actually need them to put the board up just yet. We can actually wait till Monday, but we want them to action it today. Any notes there? So please affix the sale board to the right hand gatepost. And then over here, you've got the option to select your contractor. So using the wildcard feature, find your board contractor and then press send email now. You also have the option to send a text message if you want to, but I'm just going to send email and press save. Mark request as actioned and press create. So you can see now here it says sale board for sale board. There is also a board grid that you can access by hovering over properties in the top menu and selecting boards. That will open up the board grid and by default the board grid only shows unactioned requests. So if you want to show your actioned requests as well, you need to right click and select display action requests. Again, this is a standard grid so you can change the columns by right clicking and selecting choose columns and making sure that this grid is set up properly for you. The reason you will have some unactioned requests is because you can put board requests through in advance. So most agents put the request through and mark it as actioned at the same time. However, if you are doing this but you don't need the board for another week, for example, you can put the request through and mark it as actioned once the board contractor actions it. Keep an eye on the date actioned column. The ones without a date in there are the unactioned requests. So you can click into a board request from the board grid. From the action menu, you can then mark as actioned once it has been actioned. Press save 
and that board now will be in your board movements grid with a date in the date actioned column. So you can keep an eye on all of your outstanding board requests from this grid and make sure your properties have the correct up-to-date boards assigned. Marketplace is available for you to use to order products and services from our third-party partners. If you have it turned on, it will pop up at you at various points once you're going through various processes with an expert agent, for example, putting a property on the market. You can order anything at this point or at a later date by opening up the action menu from a property and selecting Marketplace. So from a property, if you right click, you've got the housekeeping option and the marketplace is on there. You can also access marketplace from the properties drop down and select your marketplace dashboard from there. What you will have here is three tabs of pending orders, reconciled orders and unreconciled orders. Your pending orders are orders that you have put through but you haven't yet placed the order. The unreconciled orders are orders that have gone through and have been placed but you haven't yet received the commission from your vendors and the reconciled orders that have been completed. On the pending orders tab, if there are orders there, you can click into the order, right click and there will be an option on the right click action menu to place the order. That will then move into the unreconciled orders. These are orders, as I said, that are placed but you haven't yet received the commission or your markup for. And then, as I said, the reconciled orders are ones that have been placed and you have received the commission for. Let's have a think then about working with keys. So first of all, accessing the grid, adding new key details and checking keys in and out. So to access the key grid, you need to go to properties in the top menu and select keys. From here, you can search for a property address or you can search for a specific key number or you can also show reserved keys, loan keys and overdue keys as well. If you add keys in successive order, in successive number order in your company, you can use the property grid to check for the new, for the next number. So hovering over properties and selecting grid. And using the key column ordered numerically, you can see which key needs to come next. For, so for residential sales, it's 013. Back onto the key grid, search for loan keys and you can see the key numbers that are out on loan at the moment. You can open the property from here or you can return the key. If you choose to return the key from here, you can return the key from the property, but as I said, you can also return it from here. So if you choose to return it from here, you press the return key button. And you've got the option there of selecting the key. If there's multiple keys on that property, select the check-in date. Any notes you may need and then set the key status to in the office. Press save and that key will no longer show on the loaned keys section. You can also return keys from the property. So if you go to the access tab, we can see this key is on the loan as well, reserved for reviewing. It was reserved, it's now actually out on loan. And you can return them here by clicking on the mark as returned button in the key history section. Click save down at the bottom and you've returned the key and that key will now be in the returned key column in the grid. If you want to check out a key, you can also do it from the access tab. So click into the access tab and select reserve or loan a key. The key is in the office, so you've got the checkout date and the anticipated check-in date. You then got the check-in date, obviously once you check it back in, you need to set the date. Select key loan or key reservation or key handover and put in there. It's been loaned out to my colleague Barbara for reviewing today. And press save. That key will now be showing in the key grid as on loan and you can then return it either from the key grid or by coming back into the property. Thinking about viewing management there, so accessing the grid, viewing notes and statuses, and the viewing quick links. 
So to access the viewing grid, to use the viewing options in the top menu, Viewings has got its own dashboard, so its own quick links. It's also got its own grid, and you can add a viewing from this option as well, and you've got your viewing quick links there. So clicking on grid, and that will open up your viewings grid. Viewings have a number of different statuses. You've got pending, confirmed, cancelled, chased, fedback, or no-show. All of these can be filtered on using the status column. Do you remember to set up your viewing grids in the same way as all other grids? And you can keep an eye on pending viewings. And so those are, pending, those are viewings left in the diary with the status of pending, i.e. they haven't been confirmed yet. There are also viewings that come through from the website as well and from your welcome emails and your weekly emails. Confirm viewings are viewings that have happened. And once the viewings have happened, they go into the quick link of viewings to get feedback. So you can keep an eye on all sort of viewing statuses from here as well. So you can click into a viewing from the viewings grid and it will open up the viewing with the property and the applicant assigned. So this is where you've got your viewing status. Changing this will move it along in the quick links, which we'll look at in just a minute. You can place viewing feedback in the notes here. You might be responsible for getting feedback, and if you are, this is where you would put the feedback notes. And you can also set tasks to your colleagues as well, and this will go on their task pod on their home page. So we'll set that this viewing was set to chased. Any internal appointment notes. Okay, so the applicant loved the property. She is thinking about a second viewing, but will get back to us once she's spoken to her partner. So at this point, I will set it as a task for my colleague, Barbara, to get feedback or to chase for a second viewing on Monday. Right click and you've got the option to save or save and close. So that viewing is now sitting in the viewing grid as now chased. The viewing dashboard in Expert Agent is exactly the same as any other dashboard and you need to set it up in the same way. So hovering over viewings and select dashboard. So you've got your viewing quick find, your viewing navigation history, your viewing statistics and the all important viewing quick links. You can either access your viewing quick links from the viewings dashboard or from your viewings quick links pod on your home page or from the right hand toolbar depending on where you want to have them in your business if you are responsible for getting viewing feedback then you might want to think about having these two quick links here the viewings to chase and the viewings to feedback so the viewings to chase are viewings that have happened been confirmed in the diary and you need to get feedback from the applicant Viewings to feedback are ones that you've got the feedback for and you need to give the feedback to the vendor. If you don't do, do that step in one go, then they will go on to the two separate quick links. But if you do the viewings to chase and then you give it the feedback straight to the vendor, then you won't need to be using this viewings to feedback. So if you click on viewings to chase, And if you click into one of the viewings from there. So to do this step all in one go, you need to call the applicant, get the feedback details. And then set the viewing status there to chased. If you're using the vendor visible notes or the landlord visible notes using the portals, then you can put the viewing feedback in here. Okay, so she loved the viewing, she loved the property, she's in the process of organizing a second viewing. That then will go through to the vendor via the vendor portal. And once you've done that, you would set the viewing status there to fed back. You can actually, on the action menu, create a letter and send an email to the vendor with those viewing feedbacks, or you can call them obviously and just leave a message or talk to them and give them the feedback that way. So that viewing is now set to fed back, so we can right click and save and close and that viewing has now been finished. 
So clicking into another viewing, this viewing has been set to chased. On the action menu, you've got the option of opening viewings planner, which will give you the ability to book in a second viewing if you need to. So both those viewings we looked at are both now out of the viewings to chase quick link and one of them will be in the viewings to feedback quick link, that last one we looked at and the one that we set to the viewing status of fed back won't be sitting anywhere anymore. It will be on the viewings grid but it will be set to a status of fed back but it won't be in any quick links because it has been dealt with all the way through. So all your viewings can be kept on top of using the viewings grid and a variety of the viewings quick links. Those quick links are really, really essential that you get up, you get set up for all aspects of the system, whether you're just in sales or whether you're sales and lettings or just in lettings. It is really, really important to set all quick links up on all aspects of the system, on your dashboards, on your right hand toolbar and on your homepage as well. And we've got the final test details for you. So if you can go to www.expertagent.co.uk forward slash training, select the expert negotiator training and click start the test. Click start new test, complete the registration form, read the instructions and complete the test. Now these test results do go on your staff profile so your boss and your super users can see them. So it is quite important to do these tests. So please do have a go at them. They will highlight bits where potentially you need further training on as well, so they are really, really useful to do. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope you use it to help yourself get Expert Agent set up for you properly and so that it works for you how you need it to, and I do hope you found it beneficial.